this time, Commissioner Taylor for the latest concerning the cash. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this wonderful holiday season that you have blessed us with. We want to thank you for the season of Easter and the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, today. For forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we ask that you bless Catoosa County. We ask that you bless the state of Georgia. And all the citizens of Catoosa County and those that have helped defend them. In your heavenly name we pray. Salute. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we also at State have runner-up in color guard. 
uh, runner-up at platoon and state championships in platoon exhibition and squad exhibition. And for you that don't know what exhibition is, if you've ever seen the silent drill, the Marine Corps, or the Army drill team, that's what these guys do. They do a six-minute routine with heavyweight rifles. Uh, and it's not just the guys that have ladies on the team and they perform at a high standard just like the guys do. Um, matter of fact, last, last year at State, we were the only team that had females on the exhibition team, and we still won by over 65 points. Um, they're a great group of kids, great group of parents, and we appreciate uh, you guys recognizing the hard work and the, the time and the pain, and, and it's, it is pain. Uh, there have been stitches, and my coach and stuff, when he was a cadet, came back to the RO building, and he was missing his tooth. And I said, son, you're a Ringo, they'll never notice. <laughs> but we got it fixed for him anyway, so. <laughs> but, they, they, they do get a lot of cuts and bruises. I mean, it is, they're spending eight, you know, eight and a half pound rifles above their head and throwing them, and it's pretty amazing. If you ever get a chance uh, to go to one of the local competitions, we were at UTC, uh, and when we came off the court, the judge said, I don't know what to take off for. He said, I was watching every angle, and I was just so impressed. Uh, they're very impressed. As a matter of fact, our girls just got asked to do the game this Saturday for uh, the Chattanooga Red Bulls, the new professional soccer team. And we just did the Atlanta Hawks a couple weeks ago. So these kids put in a lot of hours, a lot of time. I've got two daughters on the team and, you know, I see them all day at school. I see them at practice and I gotta get along with them. So, so we really don't, I don't really get a break and stuff, but uh, they're good kids. I appreciate you letting them uh, come in and be recognized and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that there'll be a fourth state championship. And we go to Daytona and they second through the sixth to compete against every branch of service, the best of the best from every branch of service uh, in the country. Uh, in the lab, we've gone nine years in a row now and every year we've creeped up more and more. We've won trophies. We have won more trophies as a small school than any other school there. Uh, if you're coming to ROTC building, they're big, fancy gold trophies, and we've won, over the last nine years, we've won like 18 of them. So that's about averaging about two a year. So I'm very proud of them, and uh, like again, like I said again, thanks for letting us come in. You guys recognize it. Thank you. Y'all come on up, kids. You know, I want to thank y'all for your dedication. They just come from practice, guys, yeah, so if you smell something, we've been out of practice for four hours.
Sharice Miller and I live in the county and I'd like to thank you all for making the list of this giving her the star award because it is long overdue in my opinion and she excessively deserves it I would like to give you all some suggestions uh, the county suggestions for how to save money and I hope you will take these under consideration First of all, motel points and airline points accumulated when you all are on county business and on your trips should be used only for county business. These points are to be used only, should be used only for county business. They should not be used for personal use. These points belong to the county taxpayers and should be used to pay for future county business. If there's specific training involved when hiring for a specific county position, proof of prior training for that particular job should be required in order to avoid taxpayers paying for duplicated training. Make sure signatures are clearly written on receipts turned into the county for reimbursements. I think that first graders can probably write more legibly than many adults. Make sure receipts contain reason for these purchases. Credit cards should be used only for county employees slash commissioners expenses, 
not for spouses or whoever accompanies the employee or commissioner on county business. If anyone accompanies an employee or a commissioner on county business trips, you should pay for that person's expenses with your own personal credit card. For our finance department, their job is more difficult when they have to keep up with unauthorized expenses on a county credit card and wait to get reimbursed. There is a definite time span for you to turn in your receipts. You need to adhere to this county requirement. The sooner these receipts are turned in, the better, as it makes the employee's job much easier. Thank you. Okay, George Batters, B District 4. Since uh, the county manager was not at the last meeting, uh, didn't get an opportunity to uh, air some uh, concerns I have. Um, I have her four-page job description on front of me, and of course, won't have time to read it all, but the first item on the job description is the, the county manager is responsible for the administrative management of the government of Catoosa County under the supervision, under the supervision of the board of commissioners and not to take it on herself to make decisions, especially uh, with hiring and firing until it runs on front of the board. Uh, this is not a, a club, it's a, it's a serious uh, county government, and when somebody is, is hired, it needs to go through due process, and um, the right interviews, the, the right references, and when somebody is let go, the, the, uh, the proper uh, protocol is taken, with reprimands and so forth, and not just fire somebody because uh, the person didn't hire a friend or a friend of a friend or a, a friend's husband or a friend's wife. And we are watching, we're, we're watching, we're probably watching more than you've ever been watched before of every bit of spending. Uh, and surely you can see that after the, after the threshing of the last election, where you've got a vote of no confidence of 80%. We are watching everything. So uh, just want to let you know, and if you would let the uh, county, county manager know, we're watching her very closely. Thank you. people the previous two years uh, but it's a, they went out of business now we, we've outsourced to another uh, and it's all revenue for the county we just provide water and space so we think it's a good deal I have a motion to approve so move step now they are providing insurance we we'll talked about that in the last session yes sir insurance is covered by me and has verified or working on verification, I think you have two items you want to check and Travis has provided in the contract with the whole firm by modifying it. His office uh, will conduct all the required background checks according to the agreement standards and that they will be billed. The company will be billed to that agreement. The county will receive 20 percent of the price. Yes, sir. No county employees involved? No, sir. You got this water bill, Russ. What do you ask for the water bill, Ralph? Please proceed. Do you have any supervision on the county side at all? I mean, no. Just us opening facilities up for them. We have a schedule. Uh, and we'll, we'll do a survey of the people just to make sure it's it's worth uh, partnering with in the future, but that's more quality control. In the contract, that means stipulation on damages. Or anything is that covered through their personal insurance, their company insurance? Or? Yeah, through their insurance. Okay. All right, thank you. All in favor of approving? Say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
the first item, Mr. Chairman and board members, it's been on the agenda a couple of times and it's gotten passed. It's gotten passed over because I was waiting on HUD or FHA to approve our proposed policy. It's a proposed reasonable accommodation policy under the Fair Housing Act. The county has a reasonable accommodation policies with respect to its buildings and other facilities under the ADA, but this more applies to housing in the county where we had a, a situation that we resolved a HUD complaint, a fair housing complaint back last fall or winter uh, where an individual was residing in a subdivision and taking care of some foster adults through the state program. And that state program, it did not uh, coincide with our existing zoning ordinances and we had an enforcement issue. And this policy will keep that from happening again. Essentially, if, if one of our zoning officials, for example, went out uh, to answer a complaint and the person had in this situation again where they were fostering uh, disabled adults through a state program, this gives a complaint procedure where they can notify somebody at the county, which would be our HR director. There's a form where they can fill out and say, I request a reasonable accommodation and that you would deviate from your normal zoning procedures and they would submit the state law or the state regulations that allows them to do what they did. So this, pro this uh, particular policy has been approved by HUD and is before you for adoption and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. It's pretty much just gets us in that compliance with the federal and state guidelines. Correct. All in favor of approving, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Chat. Next item, uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, I'm presenting for the state board solicitor, Doug Woodruff. He had another meeting that he had to attend to. This is a proposed contract between the county and a local attorney, William Lamphere, to provide services or assistance to Mr. Woodruff in state court. Uh, he's the only uh, solicitor in his office and there are times, depending on the misdemeanor docket that they have a couple times a month, where it's more than one individual can handle and the court is getting bogged down. In the current budget, for this budget year that the board has approved, he has been allocated up to $20,000 to engage uh, attorney services to provide assistance. Mr. Lanphier under his contract, he would only be paid uh, on a per day basis for days is equal to $350 a day. He's not an employee of the county, but and so he wouldn't be entitled to any of the county's benefits. Just each day he's in court assisting Mr. Woodruff, uh, he would be paid $350. Uh, Mr. Woodruff, Woodruff would control uh, the number of days he's in court. You know, he would only show up if he asked for assistance. So it should be well within his budget this year and it terminates at the end of this budget year unless it's renewed by the Do you have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. Second. Do you have any questions? Chat. Do you have any questions? This is all accounted for within the budget? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Alicia, do you think we can get that to come in and give us that thing?
Mr. Chairman, um, I have a proposed approval of a non-disclosure agreement with the Georgia Emergency Communications Authority concerning non-prepaid 911 feed distribution reports. The 911 fees are going to be uh, collected by the state and they're going to be returned to the county with a report concerning who paid those fees. The issue is a non-disclosure agreement that we have that the county will not disclose any of the information that it receives from the state in connection with those reports. And it's a contract between the county and the Georgia Emergency Communications Authority. Adam, I approve this So I'll move. Second. All in favor of approval, say aye. Aye. The next item, Mr. Chairman, is approval of the NSYNC Systems Service Agreement. Uh, the Catoosa County Law Library uh, purchased a document presentation system for the two courts that we use at the courthouse. Uh, this system uh, allows a document to be scanned and put up in front of the jury on a television screen, in front of the judge on the screen at his desk, on the, on the screen in front of the two attorneys trying the case. It, uh, it, it makes for presentation of evidence to be very efficient rather than an attorney walking around handing a document to the court, handing a copy of a document to the jury. The law library paid about, about $20,000 for the system. And what we are asking the county, or what the county is being asked to do, is to pay the maintenance and service on that system for one year. It's $2,350. Fifty-one points nine percent of budget, 
therefore exceeded the budgeted revenue by 513,000, or 3.8%. Revenue was favorable to prior year, 896,000, or 6.8%. Expenditures for the period uh, were 12,188,000 or 46.8% of budget. Therefore, less than the budgeted expenditures by 835,000, or 6.4%. Expenditures were unfavorable to prior year of 387,000, or 3.3%. In summary, uh, after uh, other sources and uses and transfers out revenue exceeded expenditures 1,715,000, favorable to budget 1,715,000, and favorable to prior year 626,000.
Mr. Thayer elected, as I understand, with the clerk to have his grievance heard in the public portion of the meeting, which is why we're doing that now. The board will act as a body that will first hear from Mr. Thayer. He'll be able to present to you his grievance. If there are any questions the board has of him, you are able to ask those. After that, the board may hear from the county manager if it desires to her outline the reasoning for the decisions taken. And if there are any other uh, county employees or department heads or elected officials that the board feels it needs to hear from to make a decision. The board essentially is just collecting information tonight. You'll also have access to Mr. Thayer's personnel file and any of the items in that file. And then under our county policy, you are obligated to provide a written decision within 30 days of today. And your written decision would be to either affirm or uphold the county manager's decision to terminate Mr. Thayer's employment or to overturn that decision and to reinstate. So that's kind of a thumbnail sketch of why we're here and where we go from here. Are there any questions the board has on that? With that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Bayer to, to present his grievance. Thank you, Chad. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I appreciate uh, having this opportunity to uh, speak to you. So, uh, I'm just going to go down the termination order and discuss paragraph by paragraph as it's pertinent. The first paragraph outlines the reasons why I was fired and the policies that I've uh, been accused of violating. So that's pretty self-explanatory. The second paragraph indicates that on November 28, I met with uh, County Manager, who was Kane, and the County Manager at that time said that she wanted my first priority to be written policies, and that she wanted me to come to curtail some of my out-of-town training trips. She then states in here that uh, I had not reduced any of my training trips and that no policies had been done. These statements were both false. Uh, prior to the meeting on November 28th, actually prior to last summer, uh, 23 policies had been enacted and were enforced. These were administrative and personnel policies above and beyond what the county employee handbook was. When I took over the department in March of 2018, there were no policies specifically that I was there. There was a stack of paper sitting on the desk with a lot of handwritten notes to it that was somebody else's policy book, but this had never been uh, vetted through, had never been uh, finished, and it had never been uh, established as a department's policies. There were no department policies when I took over. I had an active, we were enforcing those personnel and administrative policies, again, above and beyond the employee handbook. In addition, on the day I was fired, I had in my hand approximately 40. I don't have them with me. I left them here, I did, so I don't know how many exactly, but somewhere between 30 and 40 policies in draft format. These policies were the, uh, were the result of the county manager's direction in November that she felt uh, operational guidelines were important and that she wanted me to make my first priority. At that point, I was working on a training manual because we did not have a true training manual and employees were being trained uh, very differently depending on the shift they were working on. I was given the directive when I was hired by then acting county manager, Mr. Uh, Mr. Henson, that uh, my number one goal was to fix the vacancy. We had a 40% vacancy when I took over. Uh, when the day I was fired, we had two, two, vacants, uh, two vacant spots and those were both scheduled to be filled before the end of, this, the end of March. So I did exactly as I was asked, I filled that up. But what that did was we hired a lot of people and training became, of those new people became a significant issue. However, the county manager said that she felt the operational guidelines were more important, so I put the training manual aside and started working on operational guidelines. I took a draft set from another department and in 10 days, eight, eight business days on uh, December 10th, I presented to the four supervisors, shift supervisors, each a stack of policies. They were to go through them, vet them out, what works for us, what doesn't work, what correlates with what we're doing, what doesn't. If it doesn't, do we need to rewrite it completely? Do we need to make minor changes? If it's something that we're already doing that's really close, 
then, then you know, it's easy to change. In that process, we also added about another 10 policies throughout the process. I had those policies returned to me, and it was in the process of starting to make the changes to them. I told the county manager when she asked on March 5th what the date was, my projected date, I said it would be at least another 30 to 60 days. Those changes had to be made. The policies need to be vetted at the last time. And then I was being, I was being asked by, by the sheriff to put those out to the agencies that we, we partnered up with for them to vet out. That doesn't happen overnight. That's going to take time. So that's the, that's the process that was in place and we were, hit, we were heading for. I also, uh, she also put in this, in here that I have not curtailed. Uh, however, you have not reduced the amount of time training spent in training classes out of town. This is not true. After our November 28th meeting, I, can, I canceled seven scheduled classes I had throughout the rest of the spring. That was 13 days of training I canceled. And I want to talk about the training a little bit because that seems to be a big point of contention here. When I was hired, I was told there was five certifications I must have that I did not currently have. Those five, cert five certifications incorporate 18 independent study courses. These are online courses you take. It takes about two to four hours per course. There are FEMA classes, you go online, you take the class, you go through the class, and you take a written test at the end. They also incorporated 24 off-site classroom classes. This equal 51 days of training. These were classes I was being taken, that I was being, I don't want to use them forced, but the classes that I had to take to meet the qualifications and the requirements set forth upon me when I was hired. I wasn't taking these classes because I enjoyed them. I wasn't taking these classes because I just wanted to go take classes. I was taking these classes to meet the requirements of my job. On January 30th, the, the, so that's the first contention, the first point that uh, Ms. Vaughn makes is about my fire. She did ask me on February 19th where we were at. I replied, that was done by email. I replied through an email, said this is where we're at. The uh, supervisors have got them and wait for them to come back from them. Beyond that, there was absolutely no communication whatsoever at all. When we met on, on uh, November 28th, there was no deadline set. At no point throughout the process did she ever come and say, you're not going fast enough. There's no other feedback whatsoever at all. Then we go to paragraph number four. Paragraph number four speaks of a training exercise I went to in Savannah. I've been a member of the GEMA's instant management team since 2006. This is something that was supported when I was hired, and it was something that was supported by the current county manager. I made a request on January 30th. It was not really a request, it was more of a where are we at, what do you think about this? Uh, we were doing it, we requested to participate in a training exercise in the Savannah area uh, with GEMA and the Army and the National Guard. Originally, our request was for three days. They moved this to an eight-day request. The Army requested that the incident management team be there for the entire eight-day training period. I thought that was a lot myself. Before I committed myself to being there for eight days, I went to the county manager. I sent her an email on January 30th, laying it out. I went, I got this request. What are your thoughts? I'd like to present that other name. In the termination letter, I'll quote the termination letter. On January 30th, you asked if you could attend a training class in Savannah based on the previous conversations we had concerning the issue, I advise you you should not attend. However, last week I was advised that you attended the training despite my direction otherwise. This represents a failure to obey a directive and gross insubordination. So uh, 
that, that's kind of a false statement. Actually, it's an absolute false statement. If you look at the email reply to me, the first one I received back on January 30th, the issue she's talking about is being gone for training. The email I got back from her on January 30th clearly states that her only concern is the calendar and the attempt to do a retreat that weekend that week. In fact, in her email, I'll quote, I, want, I would want you to attend the session. So she indicated to me that, hey, wait, I want you to go, but that may have a scheduling conflict. The very next afternoon, I got another email confirming a scheduling conflict, confirming that that was the week she was the only week available to conduct the, the uh, retreat between the board of directors, board of commissioners, and the department heads, planning session she'd been trying to work on. Unfortunately, the rest of the conversation happened in a, during a verbal conversation that I didn't have the forthwith to record. But the verbal conversation occurred on February 1st, the very next day. I picked her up at 9.45 a.m. to go to a meeting at the Sheriff's Department. At that point, at that point, she told me, quote, well, looks like you get to go to your training because we're not going to be able to have the, the planning retreat. Some of the commissioners, she said she talked to Melissa, and some of the commissioners were going to be in New York that week. And then she said that even if we did have it, by some, some way we could make it work, it was only going to be two days long and that I could attend the rest of the training. So I'm going to ask you this. There is no proof. It's just what she said versus what I say. All right? I will say this. The retreat didn't take place. So that supports somewhat of my statement. All right? I would never have known you guys were going to be in New York. If anybody went to New York, I have no idea if anybody went to New York, but that's what I was told. All right? I have a public safety career that lasted 37 years. It's a very positive public safety career. I have never ever taking the stance to completely ignore what I was told by a supervisor and do the opposite. There is no win-win in that for me. Why would I do that? It defies common sense. It would make no sense for me to just say, to heck what she said, and to go do the training. I didn't care that much about the training to risk my job over it, to be away from my family for weeks, to be away from work. I mean, it was a valuable training exercise, and, and, I learned, and I learned a lot of things, but it wasn't worth losing my job over. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, it defies logic for me to just completely ignore that. I'd like to point out a couple of other things. Employee Handbook Section 615, Paragraph 5, states frequency of performance appraisals. A performance appraisal should be performed for working test period employees at the end of the 12 months and not less than 30 calendar days prior to the end of the working test period. March 5th, March 5th was the end of my one year working test period. I never received that. If I had received that performance appraisal, I would have had a clue that she was unhappy with me. But instead, we went from, where are we on this with the policy in regards to the policy, to your fire. No in-between, no process, no letters, no verbal reprimands, nothing. You're fired. Seems kind of excessive. The employee Handbook Section 615, Paragraph 6, also the same thing. Employees are supposed to get performance appraisal it's supposed to be completed, accepted, and returned to the camera manager within five days after the conclusion of the working test period. This was never done. I'd also like to point out, if I, my, my firing meeting was done in complete violation of policy. Employee Handbook Section 802I, a dismissal, of the, a dismissal is the involuntary separation of an employee from employment with Catoosa County. The applicable department director or his or her designate designee and or applicable supervisor shall arrange to meet with the employee in the dismissal conference. The employee is to be told the purpose of the conference. Specifically, the employee should be advised that the county intends to dismiss him or her. 
she had already met with the intro not one director early that morning. She had already told other people she was going to fire me that day. Yet, in violation of the policy, I wasn't told that's what I was walking in. Yes, I was doing training. I was away doing the training I was required to do. I did take two additional classes, actually two week-long classes and one one-day class that were all pertained to this job. One was a certification for 911 center director. One was a one-day class for uh, construction of new 911 center, because we talked about building a new 911 center. And one was a management of lost persons something I didn't have a whole lot of experience in that happens on a somewhat frequent basis in this area. Other than that, I was taking the classes that I was required to take. I'd like to pass out one last document. I'm just asking you to look at the big picture, consider this document at a later date, and uh, I thank you for your time, and I'm we're happy to answer any questions you may have. made a lot of allegations <laughs> this evening. Um, you know, I, I basically want to focus on the reasons why I made the decision to terminate Mr. Thayer, and that is that I did not feel like he was focusing on um, getting policies in place at 911. I did meet with Mr. Thayer. I did counsel him on the issue. Um, the HR director was present uh, during that meeting. I asked him to focus on operating policies, getting operating policies in place at 911 because I feel like that's a very important priority. We were having considerable issues with our um, dispatchers. Um, There's a lot of inconsistencies there, which you know maybe the sheriff and, and the fire chief would speak on. Um, but the 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 main reason why I let Dennis go is because. He did send me an email, which you have a copy of, requesting to attend the training. The email that I have, Mr. Thayer mentioned that he told me the training was going to be for eight days. The email that he sent to me um, says, originally our portion of the exercise was only going to be two days during the first week of March. The Army asked on Monday for our team to be involved in the ent entire exercise, which is four and a half days. That's what my email says. So I'm not sure where the eight days is coming from. Um, I did respond to him and tell him that I was sorry that I was not going to be able to allow him to attend that training. The conversation that he says that took place where I later told him he could attend is just not true. That's a false statement. I did not tell him that. Um, I, I told him he could not attend and he attended anyway. I did not, I was not aware that Mr. Thayer attended the training. I heard that from a third party. And I, I believe that it's a very serious issue when your EMA 911 director is out of the office. I'm the county manager. I did not know that he was out of the office. If we had had any kind of emergency whatsoever, we were not covered because he did not tell me in advance that he attended the training. A, I specifically asked him not to attend. And B, he, he did not find, you know, he did not decide that he needed to let me know that he was out of the office. All of my department heads know I'm not a micromanager, um, but if they're going to be out of the office for a doctor's appointment, fine. A couple of hours, that's fine. If they're going to be out more than half a day for 
for any reason whatsoever, they let me know. Because that's just my job as, as the county manager is to, you know, I care very much about the public's, the safety of our citizens, all the citizens in Catoosa County. And for my EMA 911 director to be out of the office without my knowledge, he actually left the Thursday before the training occurred the next week. So he was out of the office Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the whole next week without my knowledge. So that's the main reason why I made the decision to terminate him. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, on the email. Yes. Where it said that uh, I'm trying to plan a uh, trying to plan a good planning session and just wanted to make sure it's not this week. I would want you to attend this session. Was that that was not the final email that I sent. Here's I know, was that the way my thing is, is that the session that you were trying to plan or was that the session? No, I was trying to plan a work session and I did want all the department heads to attend. Yeah. The final email, I have a copy of the final email that I sent to him where I, where I basically told him that I could not allow him to attend the training. And I did say in there that I support these type of opportunities because I do support those kinds of opportunities. You know, anytime that we can um, participate in an EMA exercise like that, I think that's very valuable to our county. And I always want to reach out a helping hand to other communities. I mean, that's, that's a great thing for us to participate in. However, we were having serious issues in our 911 department. And when Dennis was hired, I did not hire Dennis, um, but when Dennis was hired, he was told that 911 was to be his main priority. He was hired to be the 911 and the EMA director, but you know we were definitely having personnel issues in 911. So you liked the email? Was that the one that was sent Thursday, January 31st? Yes. At 4 yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Chair, do you have anything you'd like to add? You don't have to. Uh,
our, our EMA director was very new, and I can't, I don't know exactly what his hire date was, but he's new into the position. Um, and, you know, honestly, I know that he was out of the office that he'd actually either taken upon himself or been sent to another county to get training um, elsewhere. And That's so like I do not feel like he would have been, you know, ready to, to take on that duty at that time. One of my other questions, I guess, would be the chat. Uh, on uh, November 28th, in I think it was paragraph two, were the written policies of training, and I was, he said there was 23 policies he put in place. Would that, would that not be reviewed by y'all and would the commission approve them or before they go in place? It could be. We've not ever been asked to review it, so I don't know if they existed or they didn't. Said, I saw that. Okay, it was the next morning when we had a verbal conversation that the disagreement. I don't disagree that I got that email at all. Right. I mean, I provided it. But she's, but you knew you got an email. She said, no, you can't go. Then the next day, she told me I could go. And, and, I, and I would say that I was here through Thursday. I left on Friday because I had to be there Friday night. Mr. Sir, I, I guess the question I have for you is. Ms. Vaughn told you not to attend. Why did you go into it? Because, I, like I said, the next day she told me I could attend. The next day, while we were in my car in the parking lot of this building, she told me she was not going to be able to do the planning retreat with the board. That I could go ahead and go. And the next day being the 31st? February 1st. she was trying that was the only week that she could do it I understood that had no problem with that whatsoever at all had every intention on attending the planning retreat it was the next day when she told me she could not schedule the planning retreat that week that I could go to training